Hey everyone, it's Jordan from Fish Keeping Made Easy and today I'm back with another Versys video. In this video I'll be comparing the care requirements for the green spotted puffer fish and the figure eight puffer fish. So both of these fish for years have been victim to poor education and information. People have debated their ideal conditions with them commonly being kept in fresh water, brackish water and salt water. They're both smaller puffer fish with bundles of personality making them very popular within the aquarium hobby. Now I would not recommend these for any beginner fish keeper, these fish even when kept correctly can still be quite difficult to keep. If you're looking for freshwater puffer fish check out my videos on Amazon puffers and pea puffers as they would be a better place to start. So let's get into it. The figure 8 puffer or the eye spot puffer, although commonly found in various water conditions and parameters in the wild throughout Borneo and Thailand, do best in captivity in brackish water with a low salinity of between 1.005 to 1.008. Some people do try and keep them in full fresh water, but this has been found to result in poor health and high mortality rates in young adult figure eight puffers. It does not seem to be widely known that the fresh water these puffers are sometimes found in is such hard water that recreating this in your home aquarium would be extremely difficult, so a brackish setup is the best option. Now, the green spotted puffer is another fish found in various types of water in the wild in similar areas and conditions to the figure eight puffer. But as with the figure eight puffer, they've been found to live much longer, healthier lives lives in brackish water, but it seems with a much higher salinity range of between 1.005 to 1.020. It's also suggested that as the green spotted puffer gets older, the salinity should be increased, with full grown adults being able to live more or less in salt water. Be aware that a lot of fish stores keep both of these fish in fresh water, so if you're looking to set up a tank, you may have to start with fresh water and slowly increase the salinity over the next few weeks with water changes. My advice would be to find a store with similar brackish parameters to your tank buy them from there. Do not be afraid to ask to see the salinity or the pH levels of the tank before purchasing the fish. Right, so I feel like I should just give you a very brief and quick description of brackish water. So brackish water is water with a low salinity of 1.002 to 1.022. So it's basically salt water and fresh water mixed together. Brackish water is hard water which has a high pH of between 7.2 and 8.5. Using crushed corals or marine sand as substrate will help you achieve and maintain this pH. Some marine sands do have pH stabilizers in them. So basically you create brackish water by adding a small amount of marine salt or salt water to fresh water or RO water. You simply add small amounts until you get the salinity level you require. If the salinity is too low, you add more salt or salt water. If it's too high, you add more fresh water or RO water. And obviously if there's fish in the tank, you need to do this slowly and increase over time. But if there's no fish, just mix it until you achieve your desired level. You use a refractometer to measure the levels. You can get cheap ones online that will do the job. So back to the video. So the green spotted puffer is the slightly larger of the two, coming in at about 6 inches or 15 centimetres. They require a minimum tank size of around 30 gallons or 110 litres, but these puffers have been known to pace and glass surf and are messy eaters, so I would keep them in a larger tank than this. I would also recommend a lid, one, because they can jump, and two, for the fact it will help stop evaporation and stop the salinity from increasing quickly, as a lot of people don't realise that the salt in your aquarium water remains the same as the water evaporates, which can increase the salinity pretty quickly if not kept in check. This is cheaper than one of those top-up systems. On the other hand, the figure eight puffer is a little bit smaller, coming in at about four inches or 10 centimeters. And again, I would recommend the same tank sizes, but bigger the better. Same goes for pacing and glass surfing. It can be an indicator of stress or boredom. But this is a common trait in puffer fish and it should die down over time, but likely will be something they'll do from time to time for absolutely no reason. A heavier flow from the filter outlet for them to swim against can reduce this behavior as well as decorating your tank with various rocks and wood for them to swim around and hide behind. They also do well in densely planted tanks. Some plants that do well in brackish water are Anubias, Java Moss, Java Ferns and Moneywort. Again, don't be afraid to ask your local fish store what plants they have in stock and which would work best in a brackish setup. Now, when it comes to feeding, both of these puffers are more or less the same. They need hard shelled foods to keep their teeth or beaks trimmed. Things such as snails, clams on the half shell, river shrimp and anything else shelled you can get your hands on. They will likely not accept pellet or frozen food, but they do enjoy frozen foods such as budworms, mosquito larvae and mice shrimp. My tip is to hold a block of frozen food with some tweezers and the puffers will bite into the hard block helping trim their teeth. However, there is a possibility that you'll need to trim these teeth or beaks, but to be honest, it's not particularly difficult. I have a full video of me trimming my Amazon puffers teeth and it does not involve the use of any clove oil or medication. I'll link that below. 
Both the figure eight puffer and green spotted puffer are wild caught, so unfortunately can have issues with parasites. I would recommend quarantining each fish and treating them before putting them in your tank. Your local fish shop can advise you on what medication to use. When selecting a puffer, ensure they're not skinny, as once they reach this point, they rarely recover. Also make sure their teeth aren't too long and that the puffer seems pretty active. So finally, tank mates. So with puffer fish, tank mates can be a very complex situation. All puffer fish have different personalities. Some can be really timid, some can be very aggressive. So I would go around the topic of tank mates based on your puffer's temperament and taking into consideration adding anything to a tank with a puffer fish is always done at a risk. So the green spotted puffer is said to be pretty aggressive and it is recommended keeping them as a single specimen in their own tank. However, I have seen people keeping them in pairs and even in groups and also with other brackish fish. It is said that juvenile green spotted puffers do tend to be not as aggressive as the adults but as they grow they get more aggressive and obviously towards their tank mates. I have seen people keeping them with bumblebee gobies, mollies and platies which basically pick up all the uneaten food but don't be surprised if you find one of these missing or with half its body bitten. Now, now, figure eight puffers are not as aggressive and do well in pairs or small groups, but they should be either bought together as juveniles or introduced as juveniles. Like the green spotted puffer, they are territorial, so adding another figure eight puffer to a tank with an adult puffer may result in fighting, but it's still recommended keeping one by itself in a tank. Suitable tank mates are listed above, or any other brackish fish you feel would do well in the tank. So I guess the main reason people are probably watching this video is can you keep these two puffer fish together? Well, sadly, probably not. I guess their wild conditions are similar, but the green spotted puffer seems to require a much higher salinity level, which will need increased over time. They're also both pretty territorial, so would likely bicker and fight, ending up with stressed fish, leading to a high likelihood of disease and death. But I assume some people have successfully kept them together, but it's not something that's recommended. So, what puffer would you get? Well, I feel these puffers are pretty similar in most aspects, but a common consensus online seems to suggest that the green spotted puffer is more difficult to care for than the figure eight. But I feel this is more due to the fact they require a higher salinity level, but trust me, it's not that difficult to maintain or increase. But I guess it comes down to which pattern you like the best. Personally, I prefer the look of the green spotted puffer, but that's just me. So as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.